I'm Maddie. I'm Greg, and this is one of our best of videos. A bunch of your favourite moments from one week of our family science show, Let's Go Live. This time, we're looking back at Mission Space Week, where over four shows, we took you, our intrepid cosmonauts, on a mission through the solar system. We launched our own rockets, we found out about life as an astronaut, and we even planned a descent to our destination planet, Mars. Mars. That is all coming up, but first we're starting with a warm-up to get you ready for our space mission. Let's go back to the time that Maddie put me through some astronaut training. But before you practice your multitasking astronaut skills, we'd like to say a big thank you to Pearson, who are kindly sponsoring this Best Of video. We'll be back after this first clip to introduce the next of our highlights, but for now, if you can, <laughs> jump up on your feet, because Maddie's got some brain games and a warm-up for us. Because the next round of astronaut training is multitasking. Okay. So astronauts, they are tested on their ability to multitask. We need to know that uh, astronauts can do um, tricky things with their brain whilst doing other things at the same time. So they can handle anything that space throws at them. Don't know if I can do this, but right. okay, sure. So what I'm going to do, if, uh, if I feel actually, confident. Actually, Greg, can you stand there? Stand, or stand there so we can all see. There we okay. go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read you some numbers. Yes. You then have to remember that number Number, but repeat it to me backwards. Okay, do you think you can okay, do it, Greg? Got it, yes. But we're multitasking here, so I need you to do it while stepping from side to side. Or just keep <laughs> moving, keep moving. Okay, okay, all right. All right, then, let's do an easy practice. Greg, are you ready? I'm so ready. Are you ready at home? Okay. One, two, three. Backwards is three, two, one. Okay, you get the idea. Keep moving, keep moving. And zero, three, six. Zero, three, six. Six. Three zero. How Very are you doing good. at home? They yeah. are. They're Very doing good. great. Okay. Uh, keep going. One five nine. Five nine. Nine five one. Three one eight two. Three one eight two. Three one eight two. Two. Eight. Keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving. One three. Very good. And then your last one. Five seven eight zero six. What? Five seven eight. Five seven <laughs> five seven eight zero six six zero. Come on, Greg! Come on, Greg! Ah, five seven eight oh, eight okay. seven five. Okay. Not bad. How did you do at home? So there you go. You're practicing your multitasking. But right, your next mental challenge is, is uh, something called the Stroop test. Okay. Oh. Now this is where I'm going to show you uh, some uh, some words. But what I want you to do is I want you to tell me the colour of the word. Don't read the word itself. Okay, so if the word says blue, but the word is written in the colour red, I want you to say red. Got All it. All right then. But of course we have to multitask. So Greg, keep moving at the back there. So here is your Stroop test. Now you have to keep moving and say these as quickly as you can. I want the colour, not the written word. Okay. Go. Green, red, blue, yellow, blue, black. Red, green, blue. I don't know what colour that is. It's brown. Brown. Blue, red. <laughs> That's tricky. Green, blue, yellow, black, blue, brown. Yes! Well done, you smashed that. It was actually only watching this back that we realised some of the words written in blue were actually purple. <laughs> we definitely have some more astronaut training to do. Yes, I think so. And of course, we still need to get to the language learning part of the program too. However, you are ready for your mission. But where are we going? Well, we can take a look at our options with one of our solar system makes. Good idea. It can be brain boggling to try to imagine just how enormous our solar system is. And even more mind blowing to imagine the size and scale of the planets. So to help you out, we decided to make things a little little more digestible by turning the planets into a scale model using fruit. Whilst we revise our astronaut training, why don't you enjoy our fruit salad solar system? But first, let's familiarise ourselves with the planets. They all orbit, they move around a central star, the Sun. Hmm. Now here we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. That was some great pointing. Hang on, where <laughs> am I? There. Jupiter. Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. But you look at that picture and all the planets are the same size. Yeah. The planets in the solar system are not all the same size. Okay. Oh, you've got a clever way to remember these. I do. I was taught at school, my, my very easy method just speeds up naming. My very easy method just speeds up naming. Okay. 
Uh, an alternative one you could use is my very excellent mum just served us nachos. Well, I definitely prefer yours. Come so. up with one yourself as well. <laughs> All right, so let's have a look at actually how big these planets are okay. in comparison to each other using fruit. All right then, let's start with our home planet then, planet Earth. What fruit is that going to be? Okay, Earth is going to be a raspberry. a raspberry. Yeah, okay. okay, so Earth doesn't look like a raspberry. Earth is a ball of sphere, mm -hmm. um, a little bit squashed sphere, but the raspberry works perfectly for the maths. Okay, so there we go. Earth All right, then. is a raspberry. Okay, well, if Earth is a raspberry, what about our neighbouring planets, Venus and Mars? Let's go for Venus first. So right. Venus, very similar size to Earth, just a little bit smaller. So we're going to go for another raspberry. Gotcha. There All you right. go. There's its Thank label, uh, which therefore means Mars, our Ooh. other neighbour. Um, Mars is smaller than Earth and Venus. Uh, and actually, we're on the numbers. You get a blueberry. Lovely. Yes. Okay, so we could do our smallest planet now. Um, it's another one of the four rocky planets, and that's Mercury. What's yes. that going to be? So smallest planet, as you say, in the mm -hmm. solar system. For that, I've got a nut. Oh, okay. Lovely. Go. Oh, our Earth's falling over. Oops, excuse oh. me. Okay, the nut's just there. There you go. So we can put that down there. So as Maddie said, these are the four innermost planets, the mm -hmm. four rocky planets. And uh, let's have a think whether these would be a good place for us to visit on mission space. Okay, if we if we were going on a mission to space. Yeah, yeah. What do we okay. think? All right. Um, so well, Mercury is the closest to the sun. Okay, so Mercury is the closest planet to the sun, so it's extremely hot. Probably best not for us not to visit there. No. Also, it's really hot when the sun's on it during the day. When it rotates and the sun's not on it, that's night time, okay. right? Very, very cold. Okay. So extreme temperature is not a good place. All right, then. Um, Venus, although it's not the planet closest to the sun, it's actually the hottest. And that's because it has a thick atmosphere, so all of that heat is trapped inside. Yeah, very, very hot, mm -hmm. and actually hot enough to melt lead. Okay. Probably not a good place no, to go. No, let's not go there. No, let's not go to um, Venus. But then we do have Mars. So, firstly, Mars as a blueberry probably should have done a redberry or a red currant or something, because Mars is the red planet. It looks red because uh, of rust, mm -hmm. actually, uh, all over its surface, rusty iron. Um, it does have water on Mars, though. It has some water. There is water, although that water is trapped as ice in the dirt and at the poles, just like we have here on Earth. So maybe a bit of oxygen there as well. Thin atmosphere, <laughs> bit of oxygen, bit of water vapour. Mm -hmm. Quite a good shout. All right, All right so then. that is the innermost four rocky planets. What about the gas giants? I don't have any gas-based uh, fruit, so they're all going to be solid fruit. I hope you'll all forgive right. me. Next up is Jupiter. Jupiter. Okay, <laughs> Jupiter. Jupiter. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Is Jupiter? In. Jupiter is the size of a watermelon. Stay there. It is enormous compared to the other planets. Wow. Wowee. That's incredible. Jupiter. <laughs> so Jupiter is a big load of gas, essentially mm -hmm. kind of like storming round. And talking of storms, mm -hmm. there's a, a giant red spot yeah. on the planet. What is that? Well, it's actually a storm that's been going on Jupiter for over 150 years. Yeah. Uh, but it's so big, it would actually fit planet Earth inside it two times. Okay, there you go. I'm sticking How on amazing. the great red spot. Oh, no. Gosh, Jupiter is oh, massive. No. There we okay, go. all right. So next up is oh. Saturn. And here right. comes Saturn. Saturn is a melon. It's also really big. I didn't think Saturn was that big. Technically, it would be about a centimetre wider, but this okay. is the best I could do. Oh, if anyone is um, a massive nerd like me, then uh, I'll put a link to the calculator that allows you to make your own, scale up your own solar okay. system planets. And of course, okay. Saturn already has uh, the rings on it. Um, but actually, those rings aren't solid rings. Those are bits of dust, rock and ice that are whizzing around the planet. Uh, but they're going so fast, they look like solid rings. And Saturn is not the only planet to have rings. All four of the gas giants have rings. Oh. Good fact, right? So let's add the other two gas giants right All now. Right then. So we've got Uranus and yep. we have Neptune. Uranus so Uranus and... there is being represented by an apple. Uranus and Neptune. Let's just show you those. There Lovely. they are. Whoa! Don't Jupiter. you go anywhere, Jupiter. Jupiter keeps wanting to run off. Now, really cool fact about Uranus. Um, actually, it doesn't rotate like this way round, so it doesn't spin like that, like most planets do. Instead, it spins 
sideways. Whoa. So I need cool to put fact. that sideways. If you can, if it will stay there. Uh, it's a really long way away from the sun as well. So we. So Uranus, if we were to visit Uranus, it would probably be a bit too cold for us. <laughs> and then we've got Neptune is the orange, which is a little bit smaller than Uranus, right? Yeah, yeah, this is perfect. But Neptune is the furthest planet from the sun, so it is extremely cold. It is also very, very windy as right. well. Yeah, okay. there are crazy fast winds that whip frozen methane all over the planet's surface. So uh, very cold, very cold and windy. Not great places to but be. But what we've done, you have now recreated our solar system using fruit. Yeah. We have all of our planets, but we're missing something, and that is the sun. Yes. Now, how big do you think the sun would be if it was to scale to the planets? It would be. Take the end of this. Yeah. Uh, keep going, 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 stop. This big. As big, yeah, look at that. Look, wow. Know, if I take us, it's as big as the whole <laughs> screen. Wow, that is, that's incredible. That is how big the sun is. So there you go. That is our solar system to scale. No! <gasps> <laughs> Using fruit. I still can't get over the size of the sun when you compare it to all those planets. It is incredible. Sure is. Now, the good news is that whilst you were watching that, Maddie and I worked super hard mm -hmm. and we passed the astronaut training program. Yeah, I am now fluent in Russian. Yavort Maddie. So we are newly qualified astronauts. We've got a better idea of what's out there in the solar system. We are ready to go. Yeah. But we're going to need something to help us get there. Ah, a raqueta. Sorry, what? That was, um, that was rocket in Russian. Um, uh, but how does a rocket work, you might ask? Well, we're about to show you using a giant red balloon. Yes. It's rocket time. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, but first, we need to go back to basics. Uh, yeah. I'm, I've got a balloon here. Uh, I'm just going to blow it up. Okay. So we're going to find out how a rocket works. <laughs> right. Get, um, hold your hand out for me. Sure. That's it. Away from the mic. Well, this will be very loud. Okay. Um, if I let go of this balloon, uh, yeah. what do you feel on your hand? Um, <laughs> Always a giggle. Your spittle, but uh, uh, mainly um, I can feel the air rushing out of the balloon and it's pushing on my hand. Right. So when you uh, let go of the neck of the balloon, the air inside pushes out on your hand. Okay. So what would happen if I let go of the balloon? This is a fun thing's going to happen. If you let go, the air will rush out and the balloon should whoosh in the air, up let's, in the air. Let's try it. So the air is going to push on your hand yeah. and that's going to push the balloon up into the air. Are you yeah. ready? Okay. Three, two, one. <laughs> well, we're not getting that back. Well, that oh, worked. No, that worked well. Yeah, um, okay. So that's great. Mm. Can we try it with a bigger balloon? Do you reckon a balloon that size will do, Greg? I think we should start inflating it and find out, Mads. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Keep going! Right. Okay, hopefully you can hear me a little bit on top of that. Right, so the reason that the uh, the balloon flew up is because the air pushed down against Maddie's hand. And there's a, a guy called Sir Isaac Newton who apparently discovered gravity when an apple fell on his head. And he, one of his laws says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the action down was the air coming out of the balloon and the equal and opposite reaction was the balloon going up. Oh my goodness! The more, oh, thank goodness for that. All right, let me turn the let me turn the mic back up. All right. So the more air we put into the balloon, the more air, <laughs> the more air there will be to come out. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get a bigger whoosh. That's bigger than that's bigger than you. We could have used this for the sun in our scale model. Yes, it's still only half the size that sun would have been. So what All do right. you think is going to happen this time? Uh, well, I'm hoping that even more air is going to rush out and it's going to properly shoot up well it should stay in the air for longer as well hopefully it also depends on gas. the size of that neck okay. okay shall we do this everyone shall we do this three two one go blast off <laughs> that that's hilarious no <laughs> i was knocking all the set over there to get it <laughs> listen to that noise oh it's on the camera <laughs> well i think we could <laughs> I think we can all agree that was a success. Wow, okay, well that was fun. That 
was hilarious. <laughs> uh, we've got a few rocket makes coming up in just a moment, but you'd never believe it, all this work prepping mission space it's got me feeling a bit hungry. Oh, I'm not surprised at all. It's a good job that I packed you uh, some more of my homemade astronaut pudding. It just needs hydrating. So there, there you go. Yes, um, maybe I can wait. Maybe I'm not that hungry after all. Perhaps I'm just thirsty. What do you mean? I thought you loved freeze-dried dehydrated astronaut food. Let's pop that there, I, I do. Honestly, yes. What do you think? Would you eat it? Have a look. The main problem with eating and drinking in space, well, we saw it earlier with uh, Chris Hadfield, mm -hmm. any water wouldn't stay in a cup. It would come out and just kind of hover in the lack of gravity, you know, very micro gravity and just kind of hover it there. Yes. Um, also, you've got the problem that any crumbs from anything you eat could go hanging around, flying yeah. around and then get into electronics and cause all sorts of problems. No, you don't want that at all. So actually, no. special ways of packaging and, se and sealing food mm. uh, had to be invented. So anything with crumbs had to be in a sealed packet, but also food had to be lightweight because the space station has to carry a lot of food yeah. to feed the crew for a long time. Time. Yeah. Um, so freeze dried food is something that's used in space. Mm, uh, when I've you, heard of that. yeah, when you freeze dry food, uh, you cook it, you then quickly freeze it, and then you suck all of the water out because that water's heavy. So yeah, that's exactly. a good idea. Get the water out. Okay. Yeah, so it's freeze dry, but yeah. this means that that food will last a really long time, which is a good thing, and it's light. And I've actually got some freeze dried food right here. Oh yes, you might have seen this before. This is actually freeze dried astronaut ice cream. Um, it's brilliant because it's not got any water in it. It's lightweight. It was developed for space, but it didn't go down too well with astronauts, so they weren't. All right, okay, so we're going to try it. I want to try it. Yeah. I've actually never tried this before. Neither have I. Well, apparently... Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. We washed our hands before the show. We're always yeah. very careful that everything is clean. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, okay. Well, it's disintegrated a little bit. Oh, so. look at that. Oh, it's, oh, it's in an a ice, wafer. It's an ice cream sandwich. There you Ooh. go. You can okay. try that bit. Shall I try some of this? I've got some actual ice cream here. Can I just... Can I just should I just go for it? Yeah. There you go. I thought it was going to be delicious. It's just like really dried out biscuit. Look. There you go. Here you go. Here it is, close up. Well, it's the ice cream really that we're looking at here. I mean... I mean, it's tasty. It's quite good. Mm, it's pretty tasty. Well, there you go. So actually, at first... It's, gro it's growing on me. It's growing on me. That's, wow. We should have thought about this, shouldn't we? <laughs> this stuck to How are we going to finish the show? <laughs> So there's no water. It's got the water, the saliva in my mouth, and it's just like somebody going. <laughs> we haven't thought about this. Anyway, so some foods like the ice cream are freeze dried, and others don't need to be. Wow, gluey. Will <laughs> says we should have freeze dried beans on toast or seeds, seeds on, on toast. toast. Um, so yes, yeah, some fo some foods are freeze dried. Other foods don't need to be dried at all, or anything happens because something like a dried fruit, you can just eat it as it is. All good. Oh. But then other foods mm. need to have water added to them to make them edible. Mm. So it will be um, a dry food, maybe something that's powdered. And when you add water, just like Tim we Pete saw that did with, with Tim. his eggs. Yeah, you kind of, uh, mm. he used a tap essentially on the side uh, that put in some uh, warm or cold water in it yeah. and it rehydrates it. That's the word, rehydration. Um, anything else I can try? Yeah, so if you uh, just look over there, we have got... Mm. Um, some dehydrated food. Oh, it's warm. This is, yeah, so it's savoury this time. And I've already put some hot water in it. So let's see. This is exactly the sort of thing that astronauts would be eating, although they would have it out of a sealed tube that they could... Can I just say, we're doing this the wrong way around. It's supposed to do savoury followed by sweet. Oh, well. Um, Rules. Here's a, here's a spoon. Okay, then. So this is a, a sort of um, potato hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> Show that to the camera there. Go on, you mm. take a bit. Let me show it to this camera. Lovely. To... I can't wait. Mm. Lucky me. Oh, dear Lord. It's not that bad. I mean, I wouldn't... It's not It's not amazing, but if I had to live on that... Well, there you go. That's your lunch sorted then. Oh, there you go. There you go. Me. You can have that. Okay, so there you go. So that is an example of the type of food that has to be hydrated. Someone's just said, no, get a <laughs> bin first. Um, but Greg, your your meal hasn't finished there. All right. I've gone and made you your own. Leave that for later. Greg's Astro Pudding. Look at this. A little what? cheeky surprise. 
This is amazing. Okay. So I have made this for you, your very own pudding. Thank you. I, I mean, I'm saying thank you. I haven't tried it yet. Right, um, so Greg's Astro do, Pudding, what do we do? Well, we're running out of time, so oh. we're just going to add in a little bit of water, just like this. So imagine that we are oh, doing... Oh, it's Oh, sorry. <laughs> imagine... Hang on. Let's take right. the straw out. Okay. No, it's okay. It's all right. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So imagine we are on the space station... We are filling our Astro Pudding with water to hydrate that powdered stuff. And then, not that dissimilar to an episode we did last week, you just need to mix it around, like we saw Tim doing, just like this. And just so you know, everybody at home, for this, I have used um, custard powder, I've used some oat flour, a little bit of icing sugar. If you were doing this at home, you could maybe use uh, something like a powdered angel delight. Oat flour um, is just oats that you've whizzed up in a blender, and now you right? Can, yeah, yeah. And now you can take... It's funnel out and you've got your own little straw so have your own astro pudding mm, let's just look at this in close up everyone lucky me okay so if you wanted to you could make it much thicker consistency so it was more um kind of kind of like a pudding <laughs> texture but i've made it more like a smoothie so you can drink it through a straw okay here goes i mean it's wet is I it, quite like it. Is it okay? It's a bit like a smoothie. But actually, I think it would be fun if you made your own. It's chewy. your own recipe. It's quite chewy. Why not have a go at making your own astronaut pudding? All you need is the dry ingredient and you just add water. Perhaps your recipes will work out tastier than ours. That is not fair. It was all right. <laughs> it was, actually. All right, let's return to rockets. In one episode of Let's Go Live, we showed you how to make three DIY rockets at home. Two are powered by air and one is powered by a fizzy chemical reaction. We'll be back after this with one final favourite moment from Mission Space Week. We're going to show you how to make three rockets. Yep. And this is the first one. All you're going to need is... Just say two are powered by air. The third one uh, could get a little bit messy because it's a fizzy chemical reaction. It is. Um, so this first one you can do indoors any way you like. And you're going to need a paper straw. If you don't have a paper straw, you can just roll up a piece of paper and make your own tube. Good. Eh? Okay. Then what you want to do is get a strip of paper and then roll it around the end of your paper straw like this. So I've just rolled another piece of paper into a tube so it fits over the end and it's not going anywhere. So if I take this off, what you want to do now is decorate is decorate your own rocket and stick it to this cap. So here are some that we made earlier. I, I was trying to find my. I think the balloon. This. I think the balloon incident earlier knocked it off. Oh, oh really? I found okay, it. Here we go. That's what I was looking for. Here it is. So these are our rockets. So actually, you can see that all I've done is I've just attached the little paper rocket that I drew, and I've stuck it to the cap. And here we go. So these are powered by air. So what's going to happen is we can blow into the straw. The air is going to uh, find its way to the end, but it won't be able to escape because of the sealed cap. So pressure will build up until the air finds its way out and the rocket will go up. Got it. Okay, should we, should we give it a go? Yep, I think we'll right, yeah. get, get low, ready? Okay, three. Hang on, hang on, I'm going right now. Three. So we're gonna blow oh. through the tube and it's gonna basically, all that air is just gonna push the rocket straight up. Okay, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. <gasps> oh no, mine's too yeah. tight. Hang on, I've had a failed launch. Going again. Three, three two, one. Blast off. Yes. It hit me on the head. This is fun. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's that's design number one. What's design number two, Maddie? Okay, so for design number two and three, we actually went outside and here's what happened. Yes. This is our washing line rocket. If you don't have a washing line, you could take a bit of string and you could put it between two chairs. You could do that inside as well as outside. And then what you're gonna need is a paper straw or a biodegradable straw. Uh, if you don't have a straw, you could use a bit of penne pasta, you know, the tube ones. So you cut a bit of that straw off, you thread it onto your line, you put a bit of sticky tape on it, then you need a balloon. We've actually drawn a rocket design on this balloon. Okay, <laughs> let's blow it up. <gasps> Not too much. <laughs> right, now you need to stick your balloon to your sticky tape. Don't let go of the end. It kind of works best if you do it as close to the end as possible, like that. Okay, so far so good. Now, stand behind it, pull the string nice and tight, and what's gonna happen is when I let go, all the air that's inside this balloon is gonna rush out in this direction. We're gonna get an equal and opposite force in that direction. Okay, all right. Are we ready? Mads, you all set? Yeah. Three, two, one. 
Yeah, that was good. That went well. You could walk away, set up two lines and have a little race and you can refill. Go again. <laughs> Finally, we're making fizzy rockets and for this you're going to need an empty fizzy vitamin tablet tube, two fizzy vitamin tablets and some warm water. That's all you need. So get uh, your two vitamin tablets and break them into four pieces and then you can put those four pieces into the oh, so cap. Each, each one into two? Yeah, well it doesn't really matter. Just make sure I'm that you are pushing two fizzy vitamin tablets. That's it. I can't put make that in. That's okay. <laughs> Once you've loaded your cap with your fuel, you want to get your empty tube. Here we go. Thanks. And fill it to a quarter. So that's about there with warm water. We've already done that with ours. And of course, decorate them like rockets if you want to. Mine is called Gassy Galactic. Oh, and mine upside down right now, but it's called the Fizzy 2 because you're using two fizzy vitamin tablets. All that's left to do is put the cap onto the tube turn it upside down and we should have lift off. But why is that going to happen? Well, the fizzy vitamin tablets will react with the warm water and they'll release a gas called carbon dioxide. But that gas doesn't have anywhere to go because it's inside a sealed tube. So the pressure will build and build and build until the gas forces its way out, pushing the lid down and the rocket up. Or at least that's what should happen. Should we do it? Yeah. Okay, here goes. Okay, go. Gassy Galactic Three. ready for launch. And then lean back. No! <laughs> Why is my not no. going? Oh, that one was so good. Yours went so much higher. That was amazing. That went really well. <laughs> How good was that final rocket design? The tube, it went so high in the air. I loved that. I also love the simplicity of these ones though. Good <laughs> shot. So you've seen our launch, but where were we heading? Well, a bunch of you decided that our destination would be Mars. Mm. So the next thing we had to think about was getting down to the Martian surface. We had loads of fun designing our own landing modules and experimenting with different parachutes to help us slow down their descent mm -hmm. and protect the precious cargo inside. And because it was Easter when we filmed this, we thought, wouldn't it be fun to make that cargo Chocolate eggs. Yeah, here's what happened when we took on the chocolate egg parachute challenge. Welcome to the chocolate egg drop challenge. Martian edition. We don't have a Mars rover, but we do have a chocolate egg. We've designed three types of parachute in attempt to safely land our precious cargo on the rocky surface of Mars. Uh, also known as our patio. Up here, I am launch commander, and it's my job to drop the payload out of the window. If you do try this at home, it's really important that you don't play by a window without a grown up. I'm nice and safe, and I'm using a small window. Over to you, Greg. Down here, I am mission control. I'll count down to launch, and then I will time how long it takes for the payload to hit the ground. First things first, let's do it without a parachute, just the egg in its little case. Okay, egg in its case, no parachute. Three. Two, one, drop. It hit the water butt. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's our target. Maybe that's our target. I'm ready for landing. Three, two, one, drop. Oh, <gasps> that was good. Yeah? 150. 150. So we can definitely slow things down. Surprisingly, the egg is in one piece, a little bit dented. Um, but what we want to do is we want to slow down the drop, slow the descent, the full speed, so that our lander hits the ground as slowly and softly as possible. Right, so let's try parachute number one. I've got a new egg and this is our parachute design number one. It's a paper aeroplane. We're going to call it the glider. Mission control, I'm ready when you are. Three, two, one, drop. Oh, well that, that wasn't very good. Uh, I thought it would glide. <laughs> it just fell out of the pot. So that definitely didn't work. We're on to uh, design number two. This one, definitely a lot flatter than it should be. That's not in a good state. Mm, still tastes good. New egg and this is our design number two. We're calling it the PPP, the paper plate parachute. It's a great name, it's a great okay. name. Mission control, ready to land? Yeah, three, two, 
one, drop. Oh, the egg fell out again. <sighs> this is a disaster. We haven't thought about the stability of the parachute with the capsule. I can drop it better. Three, two, one, drop. Oh, it did fall out. It did fall out, but it went really well for the first half. Okay, okay. Oh, the time was 1.58. It was better. Egg is slightly, very slightly dented. Okay, design number three. New egg and our third parachute design. We call this one bag. I couldn't think of a name. <laughs> okay. Okay, commence launch in three, two, one, drop. That was good, Ooh. that was good. Ooh. The egg is in one piece. I think this was our best. Okay, the plastic bag was the best design, so maybe we can improve it. When you try out a scientific test, the key is to only change one thing at once. So it's always same egg size, same pot, same strings, different parachute. We've now decided on our best design, so now we're going to change one thing about it. We're going to change just the size of the bag and see what effect that has. This is our newly improved bag parachute design. Right. This is called bigger bag. Ready when you are, mission control? Three, two, one, drop. Oh. Ooh. That was a little bit of a delayed drop, but it was definitely over two seconds, about 2.10, I think. Amazing. You could see it just gently glide down. So the egg is in one piece. I don't think it fell out till it hit the ground. This bag caught a lot of air, so it created a lot of drag. All that air got caught in it, all those air molecules, and it slowed it down on the way down. I think we should try Mark Three, even bigger bag. This is our final drop with the biggest bag yet. Okay, I'm just loading it up. Go for launch. Three, two, one, drop. Oh! Oh, oh beauty! That was good! That was amazing! It's in one piece. That was awesome. Here is the winning parachute! Yeah. Yay! And that was the chocolate egg drop challenge Martian edition. You're gonna eat the payload? Yeah. <laughs> Fair. Mm. Uh, try it yourself, change one thing each time and let us know what your best parachute design is. Back to the studio. That excellent landing feels like the perfect way to bring this video to a close. Good yoke. No. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed our Mission Space highlights. If you want to catch up on any of the four episodes from the week, there are links to each of them in the description box below. Thanks again to Pearson who have kindly sponsored this video. Any grown-ups watching may want to take a look at their learner resources. We've linked them in the description box below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do and then click the little bell there as well then you'll get an email whenever we upload a new video that is the best way to not miss any time we go live as well now as always stay curious we'll see you soon for a new live show or a new best of bye, bye. <laughs>